What's up guys, it's Ben Bonk, and welcome back to our second part in our Unity sliding puzzle kind of game. And in this video we're going to be going over a win state, which is going to load another level when you get to this certain goal. And we're going to make some spikes as an enemy, and you make all different kinds of enemies if you want. So let's get freight started. So I've gone into Photoshop, and I've already made one of these kind of uh, spikes things, and so I'm just going to drag that into Unity right now, which is just a little red spike, so you know it's there. And then I also have a um, little thing, the, like a little the black thing, which is going to be like my goal, which you really want to get to. And so right now, um, if I just want to drag one of these in, you notice they're really, really big. And so what I'm going to do is I actually am just going to go and create an empty game object with a sprite renderer and drag in our other spikes. And now we can name this to spikes. Something like that now here again if you want to you can like adjust the color to make it like kind of darker or you can really just edit your color however you want i'm just going to just keep it at white just so it's going to be the default color and so yeah first of all what i want to do i'm going to press the r key or just go up here select scale tool and let's make these much 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 smaller and you can change around for every spike thing that you make you can change it around and so it's a one, be, one, one, one might be really big and one could be really small. So if I go and slide in my game view, oh, it seems like we have a little error here. Sometimes if you have this kind of thing where you can't really see anything, what you have to do is duplicate something that's already working and then just drag it in the sprite render and let's scale that down a lot. Yeah, let's put that scale down to like one, one, one. So now we have our spikes in our scene, and they have a drag at uh, 90 degrees on the angle. Change that back to zero. The transform, and let's actually scale this down a little bit more. And so it's a, I'd say a decent size. I mean, if we go in here, we look at our spikes. That's probably like a decent size for our uh, game right now. And you can always change around the size around everything. Maybe make this like a little bit smaller. And so now I can see, but when we place our spikes, they kind of go over this, and I kind of want it to be under, and it'll look a lot better. So I'm going to go to our sorting layer, make that negative one, and so now they can just go straight under, and it looks a lot better in my opinion. So now you can see we have our spikes in our game, move around as so. And yeah, but they don't really work yet. So we can fix that by uh, doing two things that we're going to add. And we are going to make a box collider 2D. And there should already be a, a default box collider on it. But I can see my collider is a bit messed up. So I'm going to hit edit collider. I'm going to go over and just drag one of these points down. Until I think it looks about good. And yeah, that looks pretty good for my thing. I can click this again to get out of edit mode. And yeah, that's going to be our box collider. And then we also want to basically say... When the, you know our enemy touches this, we want him to die or something, and then wait to reload the scene, something like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a script, and let's just call this spikes, or uh, enemy, or whatever you want. Type in spikes, new script, and create an add. So now let's give that a second, and double click on it to open it up. So now we're going to make a few different variables for now. This is just going to be getting the spikes and the loading system working. But then the next video we'll go over some polish and then we'll add on the script later. So basically the only variable I'm pretty sure I'm going to make right now is just going to be a public. So we can access this from the inspector string, which stores some text. And let's call this current level. Always add a semicolon. And so in, we're going to make our on collision enter and actually we're not going to need our update and start function now that I think about it. So again, let's make a void function and on collision enter to D. Should I make that when you press tab and then we're going to say if our collision dot game object dot tag is identical to player. So basically saying when our uh, thing that this collides with, if it's player, then well, what do you want to do? We want to destroy the player. You can use that by saying destroy collide, co excuse me, collision dot game object. So this is literally just saying if, if there's something that collides with it and it's game object tab is player, 
then we just want to destroy whatever collided with this. Add a semicolon, and that's pretty good. Now, after that happens, we want to uh, probably play some particle effects and that kind of stuff, but we're going to go into that in the next video. So we can also just play, play animations and particles. I'm just doing slash slash, which is just a single line comment. So just for now, we're just gonna make a uh, thing called a coroutine to wait and load a scene because I want to have my person die, play some animations, maybe screen shake, something like that, and then wait a second and then load the scene. So we can really get our scene to feel, you know, we don't want to just, if we load the scene right away, we won't get to see any of the things. So we want to make a thing called a coroutine to um, pretty much um, make like a delay on when we do something. So we can do this by making a new I E numerator that's not numerable that is numerator and this is a coroutine and we're gonna call it like let's say wait load scene and this is basically a void I can make them like, like void wait load scene but this is uh, makes it into a coroutine not the best to explain these but I'll try my best then for every function we'll need some curl or parentheses and then let's make our curly brackets and then we're gonna say in here, which is basically telling our thing to wait. Um, so we're gonna say yield return new wait. Um, that's not that's the wrong one. Wait four seconds. And then we're gonna type in our parentheses and we can uh, choose how many seconds we wanna wait. If we wanna wait 10 seconds, which we don't wanna wait 10 seconds, we can say that, but I'm just gonna say one second for now. And then we're gonna say, and so this is basically saying when we call this function, it's gonna say, can read whatever is up here and so realistic we could put this stuff right here and it'd be fine but it's it's okay for now and so we're just gonna say wait one second basically and then after that after it's wait one second it will just basically run whatever is down in this line so we could say you know whatever we want and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the top and I'm gonna make sure I'm saying using the namespace which is basically Defaultly, Unity doesn't have all everything loaded in, like, because that would probably, I would estimate that it would just really slow down Unity a ton. So we're gonna add a namespace which has a bunch of different things to load to different scenes. We're gonna say using Unity Engine dot Scene Management, which is gonna allow us to change scenes efficiently. So we're gonna say our Scene Manager, which is before. I don't know, I'm keeping spelling that wrong. Scene Manager dot load scene and then we're gonna say our current level so what this is just gonna do is we get this thing and see if I remove this copy and paste if I remove this should not know what that is and say it does not exist so we need to make sure we have this namespace in here so it knows to access that from there so we're gonna say our scene manager which is kind of like a script which is basically then we can do our load scene I'm just gonna say what in load scene and then we're gonna say our current level, which is our string, so we can change that to wherever we want. You can also do a few different things, like if you want to, if you know and for fact you want to like load, you can do uh, quotation marks and say like level two or something. But then we have to change the script every single time, so it's much easier to put this into a screen or a string, so we can just change it inside the inspector when it's public like that. So that should work pretty well. Let's head back into our Unity project. And now let's make sure our player has the tag of player. And that should be default in Unity. And so now let's see. Um, let's make sure everything is good. Let's open this up a little bit. Move around. And then let's go into the spikes. It's going to destroy it. And actually, before we do that, let's make sure we go into our... Um, Let's make sure we go into our spikes, or it's actually called, probably renamed this spikes. Um, and let's think our current level to, actually, no, before we do that, I should really save this sample scene and just put it into our, yeah, scene. You should have this scene, and you should just have the sample scene, and I'm just gonna rename this something like uh, level one, you know. Then we're gonna, it's gonna ask you to press enter, and then we're gonna press reload. Should say level one, so we can go and open this arrow. Say spikes. So current level, whatever that is. Let's just say oh, current level is level one. So it's gonna play on this. 
head into the spikes. It's going to wait a second. And it should... Oh, actually, nope. It's not going to load this because I'm pretty sure um, it might be the build index. Let's see. Destroys the game object. And it looks like we must have done something wrong here. Destroy collision dot game. So we know it destroys this. That's my fault. Um, yeah. So I forgot to start the coroutine. Um, so yeah, we can't forget to start our coroutine by using uh, start coroutine parentheses wait load scene, which is going to be our parentheses name. And then we need even more parentheses. Make sure you're probably going to mess up something if you forget these parentheses inside and just do it like that. You're just going to get all these errors and you'll be very confused. So make sure, make sure, make sure. Can't tell you how many times I've accidentally forgot these parentheses. Screwed so much stuff up. So yeah, got to start our coroutine. And I'm sorry that I forgot to do that. So now when we go into uh, Unity, let's see. Go in here, waits a second, and it reloads the game. So while we wait that second, we can play some animations, that kind of stuff. And that's pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in our scenes folder. I'm actually going to clear up some things like some organization and I'm going to have and I'm going to create a brand new folder by right clicking create folder and I'll call this scripts. And so I'm just going to drag in all my scripts here to organize stuff. Oh, scripts. And I'm adding another folder. Let's call this. Oh, let's see, I'm getting a bit of lag here. Just call this sprites so we can just drag in all of our sprites into this folder so it's nice and organized now and so now my um uh, these should be pretty nice and organized um so now we're gonna let, let's make a kind of a duplicate scene and let's try to load that scene whenever we reach this end thing so we have our level one let should actually go into the scenes did i put that oh, i put that there's so many s's i put that in there that in the wrong thing there so scripts scenes sprites there we go so let's actually duplicate this scene and we can do that by just right click or actually not right clicking you can't do that that way you do control plus d it should automatically name it level two if you didn't put a space there and you want to make sure to double click on this scene so you're changed it so it changes up here and make sure to double click that you're on this other scene and so on this scene you know let's just move these spikes up here so we know it's a different scene so basically now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my functionality of my win kind of state working. And so let's again duplicate our spikes. Let's just get rid of our, um, let's keep our box collider actually. And actually I know I'm going to remove it. Remove all this extra junk. And um, do I have two box colliders on here? Looks like I do. Let me get rid of one of those. And now our box collider, nope, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm just gonna remake our box collider because it looks like I accidentally added two and edit collider, move it down as so. And so now let me just duplicate this guy. I'm going to go and add in the end just so we have our end thing. Now he looks pretty good. I'm gonna scale this down. So it's kind of our win thing. Okay, sorry about that. So again, we're gonna add a circle collider this time. And it's really kind of big <clears throat> on my sprite. It might be perfect for you. So I'm gonna edit collider. Actually, instead of editing collider, I should be able to change the radius just right here. Should change that about three, so it looks nice. And yeah, it looks pretty good. If you wanna edit collider, you can just go like that, but then it'll change around that stuff. So sometimes it's just easier to change the radius of a circle collider. So now that our collider is edited and it's all working, let's add a different script this time called, let's say, win. And new script and create an add. So let's give that a second to load up. And this is going to be another very simple scene. Double click on that. And now we are going to use again, using Unity Engine. Make sure it's engine.scene management. Semicolon. Okay, so again, uh, sorry about that again. Uh, so we're gonna use unityengine.scene management and we're gonna get rid of our two functions again. This can be very similar to our other kind of script. Um, this is going to just basically load a scene. Let's say void on trigger enter this time because we don't wanna do collision enter. We use triggers more on things that's not gonna be collision based. And so this is just a little bit better. So 
trigger is basically just like so for example let's say i want to have myself walk in like whenever I'm, I, when i when a player gets close to a door and he presses a button you can open that door so you can say you know when he's like overlapping and if he's in the trigger area he can open the door and while the trigger is not necessarily a collider it's kind of an invisible collider that doesn't actually stop something that passes him through it so that's what triggers are kind of used for so we can basically say if our collision dot game object dot tag is equal to player or with quotation marks then oops not particle collision event then we can add our curly braces and say scene manager dot load scene scene to load and i did not forget to make another uh, public string called scene to load so now we're just going to have our public string and just call this whatever it is that we're going to sign into the inspector so another just very simple script just super easy to make this whole game really not a lot of code but it's really in the level design so now we're on level one and we're going to say our scene to load when we touch this and we're actually going to make sure not gonna not gonna forget to do this we're gonna check the is trigger box in our circle collider on this uh when thing so i'll call this when press enter we need this in uh is trigger or else when we go into here it's not gonna it's not gonna call because it, it needs to be a trigger 2d and so let's go basically back and let's make sure this is checked make sure this is checked or you'll be so mad why it's not working I when I've had this checked and I've just been so confused before, you know, like why isn't things working? So, say our scene to load, which our scene we want to load is soon, or when we beat the level, it's going to be level two, and then we can go into our spikes. We can, yeah, we have our level one. So now let me just go into our and uh, scene view. I'm just going to move this round, just like to the bottom over here so this should work i actually no before we do that it shouldn't work because i have to go to file build settings and drag in my level number two so anytime you want to like switch scenes you have to like drag it into the build setting so it knows which to build in unity and so that's basically we have to remember to do that or it won't say it's added to the build uh, settings so let's make sure to drag that in so unity knows to that that you might want to load that scene Control S, always you want to control S just in here, just in case, so, you know, every five, 10 minutes ago, you should always just see that asterisk, see that I make a change, like blah, blah, blah. Um, you'll notice that it will change around and this is asterisk, and you want to, you know, keep that and just control S to get rid of it. Always remember to save your work. So now that we have our thing, should be able to hit play. Um, Make this full screen so I can see it a little bit better. Should be able to go up and then down and then yep, it loads the new scene. And so yeah, that is basically our game so far. It, we have our spike system working where it destroys our guy. And sometimes it goes a little fast. I'm still trying to fix that and I will update you guys if I do fix that. So sorry about that. But let's see, yeah, it destroys that. Wait a second, reloads. So yeah, that's our basically game right now but in the next video we're gonna add some animations and a lot more polish and stuff so we're gonna add a game make our game feel much more alive and actually right now just to make a quick simple fix what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna make the background of this ugly really blue color i like to make it kind of like a gray like in my current game i have it kind of like a grayish color you can change it to whatever you want you know whatever kind of game you're going for here so i just think this gray colored looks kind of cool kind of some contrast there change that on all of our scenes remember to do that but um i'm just gonna get rid of level two and just because it was for kind of for testing purposes but uh yeah it's gonna wrap up our video i hope you did learn something today uh, about scene loading that kind of stuff and next video is gonna be polished and i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching